What's happening, YouTube land? Nathan here with Portside Rustics. I'd like to welcome you to video number two of the six video series of the baby food jar. Now, if you haven't seen it, I've already done one previous video. Uh, these are, I did just a mica in epoxy. These are what came out of it. I'm not going to put vinyl on it unless somebody would like vinyl on it. And let's see. Came out pretty nice. I uh, painted the tops black. <clears throat> and this series is actually because of this little guy right here. Let's see. I got holographic vinyl on it. So kind of blends in. Let's pull it back a little bit. So I was doing a live on Facebook. One of the jars on there were this little baby jar, food jar. One of the comments was, oh, what a great way to try new techniques, experiment. So I happen to have a lot of baby food jars for my grandbaby. And this is what the jar looked like before I started. Previous video, I'll show you how I take the stickers off. And they end up looking all nice and clean like these. So now I'm going to get them mounted onto my turner arms. I'm going to get them sprayed. The technique we're going to try to and experiment with today is dry mica. And what I mean by dry mica is that on one of them, after I get the base coat sprayed, I'm going to take a little brush and mica powder and just brush, brush strokes onto the jar. The other one, I might do the same thing and then do mica powder just tapped off a brush or off a spoon onto a flood coat of epoxy. And the third one will just have a flood coat of epoxy with colors. I'm going to try to do three colors on each one. Um, I'm going to do three different base coat colors. And so let me get that all taken care of. Let me get them painted up. And back here and we'll discuss some more okay we're all set up um so here's the chrome or metallic silver uh this one i did a light coat of black and then i sprayed two coats of this metallic silver then i have an aqua teal color <clears throat> this one was called Cotton Candy Pink. Now, Cotton Candy Pink, I believe, is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, the one that I'm going to flood coat and not put anything on the base coat. I'm going to flood coat, and then I'm going to do the dry dusting on top. The colors, I'm not sure I'm going to use for that. Right now, because this is kind of a chrome metallic looking color, I thought, let's see if we can't make it look patinaed, <clears throat> rusty, old, or just rustic. So what I have here is, again, the Core Rom mica powder. I'm using papaya, bear brown, and koala gray. Um, I really like these. They work well. They show up. They have a lot of sparkle. So I think the first one we're going to work on will be the brown. So I don't have makeup brushes, and but I do have some real soft Brillo brushes. So let's see if we can't. I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera. I'll pull up here in a moment and see what we got. see that 
So get that to smear around. I think we'll do some of this <clears throat> papaya green. And I'm using the papaya green to try to get like a patina type look. And we're going to overlap, work it in. Get some on the bottom. And if it doesn't come out that great like this, then we'll just throw some dry epoxy on top of the flood coat when we coat it up. It's bring it back in the light. There we go. So just keep on working it in. for gray we'll use this yeah i know putting gray in don't make sense because i have silver but if it covers up you know like i said if it don't work out that great do something different who knows maybe take a little bit of the green and go over the gray a little bit on the bottom really who knows I might pull out a different darker brown see if that works gives a little bit of contrast I said this is all to experiment with see how things work if it works then yeah try it on a bigger tumbler bigger jar I don't know how well that's showing up with the glare of the light so, it's more green over here. brush right in the silver or gray now <clears throat> the video I saw that when they did this they sprayed clear I believe to seal the mica powder on and I'm going to attempt to do it without sealing mica powder on. I will dust off most of it kind of like this. And then hopefully when I pour my... You know, this would actually be a good way to get a rainbow looking like uh, the colored titanium... No, I think I want to find a darker. See, that's my black. I need to get more black. I don't have any black left. <clears throat> Problem is, I don't think Decor Rom sells just black in bigger quantities. You have to buy the whole kit. I have bronze. There's, come on, I know I have some chocolate brown in here here we go we're going to try some chocolate brown dip the brush right in the bag well it gets a little darker and a little bit pick it back up off the kind of liking how it's turning out this may get vinyl put on it just because of the uniqueness of it put some more green right there get 
dash of green. So now I'm going to take the brown brush, kind of blend everything together. See if I can. This actually does look really cool. That's a little better. <clears throat> so the next question is, is do I do this to another one or do I just keep this one? Okay, let's brush that all down again. I think we are going to leave those two for flood coats and just do puffs and drops on those. This is the only one that we're going to go like this. Um, I'm going to think about it. I might do a quick seal just so it works. And again, the YouTube channel that I saw this on, which I'll leave a link in the description, was... Uh, Everything Tumblr's Tutorial. Uh, I believe it's Rebecca Escott. So, let me get set up to turn and spin an epoxy. And we'll get this show, under the, show on the road. All set up. It's a few hours later, but I am set up now. Um, the... One right here that we did with the dry brush of everything, I think looks phenomenal. Let me turn on the turners, get it spinning, and maybe it'll show up better. I don't know if you'll see the color change. It almost looks like a pearlescent color shift. So I do have some other ideas for bigger projects now after doing that. Um, so as an experiment to see if something would work, this is great for me because there's a few projects that I can picture using this different colors, you know, blues, silvers. So that I have the turquoise aqua looking color one right here. And then if I move over to my third turner, I have that cotton candy pink. This one we're just putting clear over. Now I did decide not to spray a sealer over this. Um, so I am going to just put epoxy on and see how it looks. It might turn into a peekaboo. It might just be awesome the way it is with a little bit of vinyl on it. Now, I don't know if you'll ever notice in these baby jars, there's ripples. That's just the glass itself. And again, I'm upcycling these. These are used baby jars. They've been cleaned thoroughly. Um, so let's get started. I already took the liberty, so we won't have to sit through it, of mixing my epoxy. It's probably been sitting about, oh, I started for a good two, three minutes, and it's probably been sitting for about, oh, a minute. So, I think the best way to start this is to start here, then go down the line. That way I can just use the clear here, let it sit there, it'll be fine. And like I said, depending on how I like it, I might decide to throw a little bit of uh, mica dust, mica powder on top of the flood coat. So let's find out and see what happens. I kind of like this perspective. I 
Oh yeah, I like my tumbler spinning the opposite way when I'm applying my epoxy. I don't know why, I just do. I did mix up only 40 mLs of epoxy. If I have any left over, I have my little smiley face molds. And I got thinking chocolate tears and stuff, they sometimes, they have these edible dust that they use and that they put in the molds. They dust the molds before pouring the chocolate in, gives the chocolate some sort of shimmer. Well, I tried that with mica powder. We'll see how that works for us. Let's get that rolled over the edge. Hoping I'm not picking up too much of the mica powder and kind of blending it everywhere, but. I like going from the top to the bottom all in the direction. People can say that they have issues with the lines that they get from that go around this way they're like ridges and i think it's because it doesn't get a chance to level out when the ridges go this way they level out when they're like this they're not flowing together this way that's my theory but boy i like how that reflects like a piece of metal of some sort heated up let's put a little bit of Hmm, should I get my alcohol? No, I'll just use the heat gun to get rid of some micro bubbles. Make sure I get this ridge all nice and done. on the bottom. Let that sit. Now we can get over to the fun stuff. Here, let me do this. Let me try here. See if that works any better. So, this one Got some weird color combinations, but I think we're going to go with those three on that. And I'm not going to put a different color. It's going to be what flood coat it is and go from there. So let's put... Oh, yeah. Let me show you the... Here's my smiley face molds that I dusted with mica powder. So we'll see if I have any extra left over. We'll go with it. Now, I do know from doing a couple other dry mica powders this way that the mica does eat up some of the epoxy. So there is a fine line between too much epoxy and a good flood coat for this method. And that just comes from what I've noticed as I've done this method a couple times. Okay, I think maybe just a hair more. So I've mixed up 40 and I definitely always over mix because I'm at like 30. So I've used almost five mLs for each jar. So now I can kind of go with that now to know that each jar, the flood coat at decent is going to take five mLs. So now let's dust this one. Get my dusting equipment. I'm going to try a couple different ways. I'm going to use the fork where it gets a couple different uh, prongs and go from there. So I say I'm going to go with the lime. I'm going to go with some lime. No rhyme or reason to my color choice. 
just I know green and purple go together. I know purple and orange go together. And maybe green and orange. Gonna be all over me. I like how it's already starting to soak in. This one we're gonna use the back side of the try to get some on the bottom side. This is a method that I did notice that it actually uses a fair amount of. Micah. So if I would have done my epoxy first, then moved the paper right away, I probably could have saved some of the mica even if I mixed it together. It would look probably kind of cool. I think this color is going to look good with the turquoise background. Oh yeah. I'm liking that color. Closer up view here. Try to. Maybe if I do that. Maybe not. Oh, I'll get you a close up when we're close to being done. I like that orange. Hopefully this will be up. If not, I probably won't get up until Saturday if I can't get to it tomorrow because then I gotta work. I gotta get a move on just so I have enough working time with my epoxy from the other one. There, just wanna get some of that on the bottom. Nice speckled. Look. Who knows what's going to happen? I think because I do have some magical violet out here, I'm gonna throw some magical violet on there. We'll use the tongs. And I think we're going to be good there. Gotta love it when it gets all over you. 
I'm going to put some Go away some of it. I like that. I don't think we have to put any more on. So, let me adjust the camera to over here. the lighting a little bit there we go hope you can see that now I got Ruby Gerbera Dotra and I got that um, magical violet so first things first let's put on a glove the paper so I don't ruin the paper so I can use it for to catch the mica whoops this was going the wrong way it's pet peeve don't know why This one we might try to do a little more full coverage of the mica. Okay, so I know that's gonna be all that. So now we're going to take this mold and just start filling up these smiley faces I've got a bunch of random odd smiley faces that some point I might try to do like a table or uh, something, just use all my random colored smiley faces, just as random. So I do want to put a little heat, or some bubbles. this back up under here and I'll let that go till morning now I think this paper right here will do take the glove off and start I think we're gonna start with some Ruby
want to see. Pink here on Jurabada. Seems it's pretty close to color. I'll just use the And when this is I'm done here, hopefully the camera will work for me this time, but come back in about 40 minutes and I'll pull the tape. That way it pulls easier because if it dries, it'll leave a heck of a ridge. Here, let's get wild and crazy, which I just did by running paper into it. Let's... Wild and crazy. Everything's an experiment. Nothing's written in stone till the end product. Now we'll get on with some magical stuff here. What I do with it? Magical, well, it's kind of a translucent, it appears when it happens. But There. So I think I'll put a little more heat to this to give us some bubbles. Help it flow around. Helping it soak in. Pretty pleased with that. So like I said, in about 40 minutes I'll be uh back out this way to peel this tape off so okay it's been about 40 minutes since I uh, got done with these so now I like to take the tape off the rim let's see here I'll turn it the opposite way and start peeling I should have put a glove on but this will give it a nice gives it a nice uh, line Let's see, move the camera over to the next one and start pulling Kind of help the turner a little bit because there's some resistance. 
probably, I don't know if you notice, but there's a small spot. Right there. That probably won't be a big deal. Now we'll do this one. You want to put a second coat over. I'll go just a little bit beyond the color. Let's see if I can move the camera over to the first one. Yeah. <clears throat> so, tomorrow morning, I will show you what we have. I'll throw a couple covers on it. Um, I'm probably not going to show putting the last coat on. If I do anything peekaboo wise or vinyl wise, I may do a whole different separate video on that. But for right now, it was just different techniques to put color or something like that on there. So, till the morning, everybody have a good evening. morning everyone it is morning 6 a.m. where I am <clears throat> so uh these have finished turning what we worked on last night and I think they came out great now <clears throat> I may put vinyl on them I may not at the end of this series I'm going to post all the jars all 18 jars and show them if I put vinyl on them or some sort of decoration or anything but really the <clears throat> purpose of this series is to show different techniques to put color or additives or um, use different uh, items to put on to effect to get an effect <clears throat> so let me see if I can't get this under the light and show you stand up here this is the one that we dry brushed the mica powder on the base coat then epoxied over <clears throat> I do want to try a rainbow of colors to get that pearlescent shift and change effect holographic effect so that's that one this is one that was painted with a base coat, <clears throat> and then the colors were just um, sprinkled on dry, soaks into the epoxy. And the last one. This one has little bubbles, probably too much mica powder, but I can sand those down, put another coat on. Looks like some <clears throat> fell off and the mica powder but it still came out really sweet so that's these three so we've done a <clears throat> we've done a mica mixed with epoxy we've done now a dry mica and the next one is probably going to have something to do with either the yarn and embroidery floss or I'm going to do alcohol inks um, but then there's still another series and of uh, different ones and different techniques to try so <clears throat> again if you've enjoyed this found it helpful hit the subscribe hit the like turn on your notifications and uh, keep watch for future videos till then